Hi, this is Terry. Welcome back to my channel. I just told Ray that it was day 63 of sheltering in place and your response, Ray? I didn't realize it's only been three days since day 60. <laughs> it's felt like much longer. Well, the nine weeks is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard. hard. I am hearing rumors that we are going to have things loosen up even more on uh, June 1st. So we have just a little bit longer, just like you just have a little bit more of school. Yep. So um, over the weekend, I actually got out. Uh, I think I'm going to title this episode Jailbreak because on Saturday we went to um, uh, Gianna's San Diego State graduation that was in uh, her grandmother's front yard. Everybody was socially distanced, wearing masks, and it was it was really lovely. Uh, it was the first time I think I'd been around other people in a social setting in the last nine weeks, and um, it was awkward to wear the mask. It was uh, awkward to see were people smiling, not smiling, saying hi, whatever, and I managed to make it through. So. Um, that was just the first thing in the day because later on my friend Alicia came over and we sat out in front, uh, more than six feet apart, out in the out in nature and uh, we caught up and it was really good to be able to catch up with her in person. And then just a little bit later my friend Jacqueline came over and she and I got to catch up. It had been, it feels like it had been two and a half months or uh, you know more than like 10 weeks since we had last seen each other. So it was good. And then, I mean, I guess this was what I was afraid of, is that if I went out and I did stuff, all of a sudden the, the dams would be broken, the floodgates would open, and um, I would just be want to be out and about every single day. And so I joined my friend Donna and uh, her friend Marianne up in Emerald Hills, and uh, we went on a two-hour hike, and I w hiked over four miles. Uh, I took Violet the dog with me. Uh, she's at my feet right now. And uh, it was glorious out. I saw some uh, horses and some goats and some bees and some llamas, even a baby llama. And it felt really, really good to be out. And after I saw myself on a video on... Um, on Saturday and I saw the little extra double chin and that I was looking poofier around the face freaked out a little bit and um, have been eating healthier and uh, going on hikes and you know just trying to take better care of myself even though my friend Jean reminded me yesterday at uh, a driveway drinks event in front of her house where we were all six feet apart and it was out in the open and she's like, you know what, Terry, you, I don't, I can't stand it when you are so worried about your looks because your value is not associated with what you look like. And she said, you know what, if you were from Boston and back East, like I was, you wouldn't even care about this. And I said, well, this is what happens when you're born and raised in California. So, and I know Ray, you get on my case about that um, yeah, I do. as well. But nonetheless, Saturday was a really great day, and my friend Donna is a nurse, and she's been doing some research, and uh, so we just talked about um, the the probabilities, uh, how the you know how the disease is um, transferred between people, um, who it really affects, and unfortunately, um, she's seeing a lot of black and brown people come through who are getting really really sick, and we talked about how. We are both devastated by this and how absolutely and totally unfair it is that a certain population of people who are already suffering on so many different levels um, are being impacted this and are dying on a regular basis. And uh, so I think about what we can do to make sure that we are not carriers who are making it more difficult or um, you know, if there are service workers, and I know I'm generalizing on this, but if just acknowledging our privilege around this and then doing what we can to do better for others in society who don't have the same level of privilege, privilege. And I know I harp on this constantly. I'm listening to uh, Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay, and the last chapter I was just listening to while I was doing my hair um, was all about recognizing our privilege and it doesn't mean that we have to apologize for it but what we need to do is use that for the greater good and I think um, I think about that often and ways that 
I can use all of the privilege that I have. Not saying that there aren't things that are hard in my life, because there are things that are hard in my life. And being a woman is hard, especially in this particular area and in the industries that I work in. Um, I don't let that stop me, but I do use that to fuel my desire and motivation to make change, to make it better for, for more, better for all. So, um, so that's, that's kind of, you know, as usual, lots going on in my head. Um, but yesterday I was able to get out. Uh, I was doing some work from home. I was procrastinating on a project. I really needed to be working on something. And my neighbor Pam asked if I would be um, up for a walk. And I thought, you know what? I'm on this healthier living kick and I do need to get out. And I would hate to do it on my own. So we popped up to the base of my friend Donna's house where we started the day before. And we hiked around up there for about 45 minutes. It was only two miles and it wasn't four miles, but I found the llamas thanks to some really nice people. Well, let me correct it. I, we found the place where the llamas were supposed to be, but we didn't get to see the llamas. They were probably, you know, napping or hiding from the sun because it was warm yesterday. And uh, I'm, I'm motivated to go back after, after 4, 4.30 in the afternoon and maybe see if we can find the llamas again because they're pretty darn cute. And uh, I definitely took a picture, so hopefully I'll either put that in the thumbnail or I'll send it over to Ray and maybe we can get that into the video. What do you think, Ray? Because it's llamas! <laughs> yeah, just put it in the thumbnail. Okay, well not everybody sees, I guess everybody sees the thumbnail. Yeah, no, there's no one who doesn't see the thumbnail. So after the hike, I came home, I did some work, and then um, went over to my friend Jean's for uh, another happy hour. And I was super proud of myself because I actually mixed a drink. And if you, uh, I think, saw uh, maybe Saturday's episode about the gin gimlet that my friend Jessica put together as a healthier happy hour option, um, I went ahead and mixed one of those up so that it was uh, just a little bit of alcohol and uh, something with anti-inflammatory properties. And then I brought a big bottle of Pellegrino. So I just kept refilling my glass with um, the water and I kept myself to one cocktail. So I was super proud of myself because uh, quarantine has been all sorts of an excuse to uh, indulge and um, self-soothe between food and, uh, and alcohol. So definitely cutting back and I'd like to say I slept better last night, but it rained off and on, and we have a flat roof. It was roof. lovely. It was it lovely. It so nice. Yes, but I didn't end up getting to sleep really well. Plus, um, the cat wanted to come in and out. And yeah. Felix um, woke me up at like four because he was sneezing really loudly. <sighs> uh, we think it he was, has. We think he has allergies. It was cute, but also like. Dude. Did he sneeze on your face? Because he often sneezes on my face. He didn't sneeze on my face. Yeah. He was at my feet. Okay, good. Well, and so the poor cat, I think, I has up allergies. With Zuko by my head. Yeah, we let Zuko in so that yeah. he could join you, so that you could be surrounded by, you know, furriness as much as possible. So you could sleep in until after 10. So, <laughs> um, anyway, uh,. I want to circle back on something from Saturday. I said that I was going to put my dukes up and uh, write a blog, and I did, and I'll put a link in the description, um, really going after Silicon Valley tech bros who think that technology is the answer to solving COVID, and it isn't, and so I wrote something that talked about all of the other different factors and you know, proposed kind of a solution because uh, I read it to my husband, Zeke, and um, he, you know, rightfully pointed out that um, I probably should be offering up a solution and not um, complaining or knocking holes into something else. And so it's not the most thought out thing. Um, there's a little bit of a political jab in there, but um, it's what we should have been doing all along, which is really having a national cohesive uh, plan around this. And uh, since our government has failed us on a federal level, um, I still think a consortium of, of uh, smart, educated, and influential people and not politicians are the right ones to come together to um, try to make this a better situation for all. So um, I think that's where we're at right now. We are at the beginning of week 10. And uh, so- in the double digits. Yeah, Sophie, uh, my son Adam's girlfriend, is leaving on Sunday. 
So it's gonna be a bit of a change. And uh, Ray, I didn't tell you this, but we're gonna interview her for uh, Saturday's YouTube video. So oh. you'll all get to meet and hear from Sophie. Um, I wrote a couple of blog posts on power anthems for women over 40. And uh, Sophie's done a lot of, um, has been, has done a lot of education around equality and um, feminism. And so I ran, uh, I ran a list by her to make sure that they were in fact um, uplifting for women. The one thing that I was looking to do is to do a power anthem list for women over 40 from the 80s. And I am struggling because it's all, it's, it's all single focus. It's women and their men. Um, there's really not a lot of diversity uh, in the songs that I was looking for. And I was really looking for 80s music, the kind that I grew up with in high school and college. And I'm, ha I was having to dig back down into like 1980 with Dolly Parton's 9 to 5. Um, Joan Jett, Bad Reputation. Those aren't really 80s songs to me. Um, and so if you have ideas for inclusive power anthems for women over 40 from the 80s, please drop me a line. Uh, I would like to put that post together, but I'm really struggling. It's kind of like trying to find um, pictures of diverse women on iStock photos. <laughs> it's a challenge. Um, I, I constantly look, like things to be inclusive, like them to be represented, uh, representative, but you know what? It's, it's hard. Um, but I'll keep looking because, you know, it's part of what I want to be doing in terms of making this a more uh, socially just and equitable society and one that's more inclusive and one where more people are able to see themselves in other things. Um, so if you have any thoughts on that, go ahead and drop me a line. And with that, Ray, you got anything? I think we're chilling. Okay. I do need to get back to work to prepare for uh, a meeting I have this afternoon and probably come up with an idea for dinner, um, taking into account what we have in the fridge, what we have in the pantry, and then um, healthy Everyone's options. unique. Everybody's um, unique tastes. <laughs> tastes. And then, uh, you know, making sure that it's a, a healthier um, option with lots of veggies. Um, so I've been doing good today. I'm a little hungry. Uh, I am probably going to have a cocktail tonight and then just top it off with Pellegrino, which is bad for my teeth. Sorry, Kyliza, but I'm trading off the, 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 the goods and the bads right now. So with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, as always love to hear from you. So drop a comment in or drop me a line either by, um, email, Facebook, um, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I'm all over the all place. All these links will be in the description. Oh, they're always all in the description. If you're on your phone, just click the thing and then you can see all of the links, um, tags, uh, descriptions, all the stuff's in the, in the description. And with that, take some risks, have some fun, and above all else, let go of perfection. Like, oh, <laughs> okay, let me do that again. I'm okay. That you're leave, of course you're going to leave that in. Um, Oh, before actually, before, I just I wanted to remind myself to uh, share with you. I was so afraid to go out. I'm no longer afraid to go out. I mean, the good thing is, is I'm in the low risk category, and it's actually better for me for my mental state to get out into the world. It's better for me and my health and my mental state to get out in nature. But doing it in a safe and socially responsible way, um, not making my health a priority, but making sure that I'm considerate of other people. So um, anyway, with that, take some risks, let go of perfection, and above all else, have some fun. And wash your hands. Always wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs>